the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. There are four keys that I wrote here that are prophetic roadmaps. I wish we had time to walk these as seen in the life of Joseph. But if any one of you in this assembly, following online from any part of the world, if you walk through this process, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture, regardless what the situation is, you truly will come out. Are we together? This is where I want you to pray. In one minute, cry and say, Lord, open my eyes. No assumptions. Open my eyes. In the name of Jesus, that that which you are about to show, because many of us are at this point now, haven't explained to you the mystery of the prison, haven't explained to you the mystery of the losses around your life and destiny, whether it was for a genuine reason or otherwise. I am showing you a prophetic roadmap by the Spirit that a way out can come if you can see. are we blessed now look up please receive with meekness these truths that i want to teach you the first key i have found if you want to experience restoration in your life your family your spiritual life your finances your destiny the first key to restoration according to scripture is self-examination and evaluation the first biblical key to experience lasting restoration the power of self-examination not just prayer not just fasting not just finding a man of god in that order of priority self-examination there is nobody who receives restoration in this kingdom if you cannot sit down and be thoughtful second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5 help us media second corinthians chapter 3 and verse Oh dear. Luke, let's look at Luke 15. Luke 15. I wrote a scripture there that I can't seem to find. Luke 15 from verse 17 to 20. The Bible talks about the prodigal son. The story of the prodigal son. Remember the story? The Bible says how that that gentleman provided he was staying with his father. He was not satisfied coming under the authority of his father and he wanted to live life at his own terms and then scripture reveals that he left and lived a riotous life for many years notice lack started when he left his father now the story of the prodigal son is not the story of sinners because it's a family it has nothing to do with sinners number two for your information the story of the prodigal son is the story of two people with the same lifestyle the only difference is one acted out his own whereas the other hid his own in the heart both the elder brother and the older and the younger brother did the same thing the only thing is that the younger brother was fast to act out his own rebellion but the elder brother also had his own hidden there are we together now so the bible talks about this gentleman who later finds himself with the swine pigs eating from them and then read verse 17 please the first five words or six words one to go and when he came to the bible never said when an angel appeared to advise him listen human beings have their wills and you can sit down and think through life please keep that scripture there he came to himself 
how do you come to yourself by thinking there is the voice of your heart the bible says say not in your heart so you don't just think you can speak in your heart he came to himself he said how many hired servants is called the power of thoughtfulness if you can take an introspect of your life and your destiny self-examination are we together many people never rise from the shackles of life and destiny because they are preoccupied by offense and will not sit down and examine their own lives why am i like this why is my church not growing lord you called me why is it that my pastor continues to prophesy over my life and people testify here every week i am a faithful worker and according to the authority of scripture i'm a bona fide partaker of the grace upon the man of god why is it not speaking in my life he came to himself there are times you need to go for a retreat not just to pray the bible said be still and know there is a kind of knowledge that stillness brings are we together that you go and lock yourself and sit down quietly and say something must be wrong he came to himself january this happened just when i was recovering my wife got sick just when she was recovering my child got sick just when he was recovering no 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 this is more than sickness i see that there is a handwriting of satan wanting to destroy my thoughtfulness it's unfortunate that we live in a world where we are preoccupied by activities and so thoughtfulness now is a luxury but believers hear me in this end time we must trust god for grace to hide away from people if you're a man of god here respectfully this is an honest advice you will never be a cutting edge tool in this end time if you the 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 gallancy and the flamboyancy of ministry can deceive us into believing that just because activities are around joshua selman it means we are making progress we need to sustain the courage and the stamina to go back in fact in the spirit the more god honors you he does it by hiding you that everything that is glorious is hidden if all of you is seen by all men you are not powerful and when rebecca saw isaac she veiled herself as a proof that she was a bride befitting for him as soon as she saw isaac the one she would be connected to she veiled herself it is the reason why your heart is hidden it is the reason why the sensitive or comely parts of your body like apostle paul was teaching are hidden don't be embarrassed when god hides you he's hiding you as proof of the value he has for you are we together but we are dealing with self-examination the young man sat down one day and came to himself he said how many hired servants does my father have and i am here feeding with the swine i will arise and i will go to my father he said and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven and i am not worthy he had not gone no he was discussing self-examination that in the name of jesus i will not be a lazy man in this abuja again the bible says the earth is the lord's i know there is a portion for me i have been giving excuses and saying all my family members are like that i know my father did not train me i know i did not have the leverage of uncles and aunties but if i continue to give this excuse i will find out one day i'm 50 years 60 years 70 years giving excuses from today i make up my mind self-examination This life of disobedience and dishonor to my pastor. Every time he's prophesying, I stand and I say, oh, I'm the one washing his car. And for five years, I've not received any testimony. I come back to myself. I'm coming for this service with my heart open. And if my pastor is prophesying, I will not just see him as my pastor. He is God's apostolic voice to me. Self-examination. Fear a man who has sat down to think. He's ready to rise listen let me tell you how restoration came to samaria i wish we had time we would have walked scripture tonight the bible says there were four lepers for as long as they were silent and not thinking they remained on the ground but when prophecy came the spirit of wisdom landed on them 
and they began to think and contemplate why sit we here till we die they began a conversation Charlie Paru's theater. Hmm. Let's get up. If we fall into their hands, at least let's take that risk and make meaning out of our destiny. Instead of sitting down and giving excuses, Nigeria is not working. Let me go and look for land at least somewhere. I may not have the money to buy it, but they will not arrest me for seeing. Let me, let me, let me trust God for grace. examination no I, I, I think reverend abba is too busy to see me I, I need this grace and i keep seeing him in my dreams but i'm sure one day by god's divine mercy he will connect us you are joking you are really joking one day you have to sit down and ask yourself am i ready to sit here in pride or humble myself and pursue like the woman with the issue of blood and you may get up and say i will come and sit in the church here on that day god will say my son please come around and just stroll you see the the prodigal son didn't need to reach home before he met his father that means the father was already walking too but he needed to examine himself and take a step of faith someone say in the name of jesus please shout it say in the name of jesus i receive grace to sit down and be thoughtful i kill every excuse over my life my ministry my destiny turn it into prayer in one minute lord i'm tired of giving excuses why i remain small why i fail i'm tired of giving excuses why the unction of the spirit is not upon my life there are enough anointed vessels for my life to change someone is praying please be serious pray Shabe kato sasiata, embreke toske baruta shiata. Someone is praying in the name of Jesus. Come to yourself. Come to yourself. I'm tired of laziness. Come to yourself. Shibarus kadiba hashalada, embreke to kato shete kotiata. One more minute as you pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. I want you to enter a covenant with your destiny tonight that I'm going to go back home and ask questions. We have an altar in our family, it's not new. The altar brought my grandfather. He brought my father so i'm suspecting that's what is happening i'm sure one day i'll think about it oh my goodness oh no sir oh no sir one day you have to wake up by 2 a.m and say sleep you hang on i am sick and tired of this i come to myself that what killed my father and god opens your eyes to see that there is an arrow looking for your destiny and for your children and you stand with power and fire self-examination it was god's servant bishop Oyedepo that said when they started the church in kaduna listen to me i started ministry in zaria i know the spirits and the altar in that territory the lifespan of impact is three years if you reach three years something must bring you down and bring your ministry out in shame so i understand what you were saying because they are ancient gates and he said the church was not growing he would have given the excuse but he said you know what let's gather a few of the leaders and they began to examine to contemplate suddenly the spirit of god brought him out according to him and showed him a thick layer of darkness that misrepresents the ministry and he he did something about it and all of a sudden doors open why are my younger brothers feeding me why am i the one who i am the one who invites all of them for encounter programs and yet at this level of life i've not been able to build a house at this it's not like your faith is tied to those things but hear me there has to be a consolation to your christian experience if by and large fruits do not grow on that tree life will not give you forever as an excuse are we together 
until you love your destiny more than sleep you are not ready to rise there are times when you should it's not an attack you just sit down and you are angry and say look my wife wake up we need to discuss this thing what is going on in this family abuja is a good land someone came to abuja in january and right now they have seen the faithfulness of god we've been here since 1998 something is wrong we confess our ignorance but for starters let us come to that point of recognition i can assure you if we call God's servant, your pastor and father today to come and hold this mic and tell you his story of sojourn through this land, I am sure that we are going to weep in this place like a funeral, a testament of audacity and power, waking up in the night. Thank God for your dream. Joseph had a dream, but you wake up to fulfill it. Dreams are powerful, but they don't happen in the realm of the spirit. Men who dream wake up. Can you prophesy and say, myself, wake up. One more time, myself, wake up. Don't be embarrassed. This is a conference. Myself, wake up. Myself. Hallelujah. Wake up. He came to himself. Number two, few minutes and we're done tonight. The second key that provokes restoration in this kingdom is the power of brokenness psalm 51 and verse 17 it is not enough to examine yourself you must get to a point where the bible says that the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit it says a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise that means god cannot ignore a broken person brokenness requires many things a recognition and then you have to admit brokenness lord it is my i've been living life at my own terms i am sure it's my pride that has brought me to this place and lord i'm not ashamed i go down on my knees to you who is the maker of the heavens and the earth if you don't help me in this city i cannot rise i come before you there's nothing to be ashamed of brokenness brokenness is a very powerful mystery as a man of god you come to god broken lord i love you but lately i found out I've just been doing ministry just for the sake of money and it may not be that i'm evil but sincerely i think uh, maybe maybe there are things in my life i'm i'm, I'm, I'm there, there, there are there are too many compromises but i come before you sincerely there is one thing i know about god when god sees brokenness he cannot ignore it genuine brokenness hallelujah Where you open up your heart sincerely like the psalmist and say search my heart and try my thoughts check oh god if thou see any evil way in me please lead me to the way everlasting some of you here if you are broken enough you will come out of that situation the problem is you are still giving explanations and then hoping you see this pride is a dangerous thing whatever you do fight pride from your life you cannot do bold face for life you have to just humble yourself and say lord show me mercy and help me a broken and a contrite heart number three what is the third key that sponsors restoration in this kingdom are we making progress knowledge proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9 knowledge you need knowledge A recognition of the grace and the mercy of God is important, but you need knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. The B part is my part of emphasis. It says, through knowledge shall the just be what? There is a kind of deliverance that is conducted by casting out the spirit influences behind that situation. 
but there is a kind of deliverance that happens as a fortification through knowledge the bible says to preach deliverance not only to conduct it there is a dimension of revelation that secures deliverance everyone please say knowledge Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 amplified says arise from the prostration and the depression that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light you see it's important for us to know that we need light light enough not just light Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you had known even in this time the things that pertain unto your peace, he says, but now they are hidden from your eyes. You need to go for knowledge. Gather the tapes of your pastor. Gather the CDs. Take a three days time of fasting and prayer and sit down and flog it out with destiny. Lord, open my eyes. What is the key to speed? Open my eyes. What is the key to sustainable influence? Open my eyes. Why are my hands empty? Lord, open my eyes. And while you are listening to the message, suddenly, as the man of God is ministering, light breaks. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. God will open your eyes to explain to you the mystery of an empty hand. He said, and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Lord, why have I not gotten a property, whether for myself or something? I know there is a way. Psalm 44, I think, verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their own sword. So this is not a, a thing of sword. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thy arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. Luke 2, 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Esther chapter 2 from verse 15, the B part says, And Esther obtained favor in the eyes of all them that looked upon her. Verse 17 now says, same scripture. It says, And Esther was loved by the king above all the women she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than more than more than suddenly you begin to pray it in your life and walk those keys and your life will change like day and night is god helping us we need knowledge please fight ignorance like you fight satan fight ignorance Ignorance. ignorance is a dangerous thing in this end time you cannot live your life wishing and hoping you must get exact knowledge the Bible says to walk circumspect as wise and unwise arrange the various aspects of your life where you are trusting God for sustainable lifting and fish out the mysteries that connect your desires to your destiny what is responsible for speed what is responsible for church growth what is responsible for transgenerational impact and influence what is responsible for ever increasing fire what is responsible for the anointing of the spirit what is responsible for relevance within the context of a generation there are mysteries that control these dimensions it is the glory of god to hide a thing but it's the honor of the kings to search it out I was teaching in Lagos and I gave a parable that the Lord opened my eyes to see. Theologically, it's called the parable of the lost coin. The Bible says that a woman lost her coin in a room. She knew that there was a precious jewel in that room that could make her wealthy, could make her great, but it was missing. And the first thing she did was to light a candle. Light. You cannot search in darkness. The second thing she did was to find a broom. With that broom, she swept everywhere. That's how we search for things. A candle and a broom. A broom talks of your hunger and your consistent pursuit. You sweep by getting all the tapes your pastor preached on faith. You don't get one or two. 
because you may find part one of the revelation that will liberate you here then you now go to a 2016 message and find the other parts that god is building for you it's called sweeping you need light enough i made a statement a few days ago morning the breaking of day does not depend on time it depends on the victory of light over darkness every time light prevails over darkness you call it day it is not when it is six o'clock or eight a.m that you say it's day no all through the night there is a warfare between darkness and light the time that light wins is what you call day so if light wins by 2 a.m it will become day are we together knowledge knowledge i have cherished knowledge as a man of god and i have cherished knowledge as a person i am i am a passionate seeker of knowledge i'm not embarrassed by the things i do not know my heart is very open when i find truth that is relevant to my life and destiny i'm like a sponge my heart is open unashamedly the proof of passion is pursued you have to trust God for grace to pursue knowledge. You will never gain knowledge at your own terms. Dr. Mudok would say adaptation is proof of honor. You have to bend. Getting knowledge from those who carry them will require stamina and sacrifice. I'm sorry to say it, but we live in an arrogant generation that want to be great at our own terms. Let the pastor see me. I can, my, I'm busy. Uh, I can, I'm, I'm, I'm only free between 11 and 12. Please see me then and pray for me. You are in trouble. No. The woman with the issue of blood kept asking. She was just hoping. She knew Jesus would pass. Ask the men and the women of God who carry real grace. They will tell you the story of their endurance. As they pursued God and they pursued vessels that really carried fire. Many of them would travel for conferences they have no business attending. And would sit down quietly like fools. I've shared my testimony. Many years ago, I was in a Reinhard Bonke crusade. There was a grace upon him that I desired, Pastor. I traveled down to Joss. He was coming for a crusade. I didn't just sit down and say, oh God, this is the grace I want. You are the giver of all good things. If you've been evil, know how to and quote those scriptures out of context that legitimize laziness and mediocrity. I went and stood on that crusade ground for six hours the first night. I watched this man minister. I have revelation. I'm a man of God too. I've seen miracles in my own life too. But you will never receive from a colleague in this kingdom. There must be spiritual potential difference. It is through light and knowledge. Please listen. I will never forget the second day I made up my mind that I'm not only going to come and stand on that crusade ground Lord I want to serve I understand the power of service and I saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs I said please can I help they said no 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 these people belong to a committee they are trained I said committee or no committee you don't know how long I travel to be here I must serve while I was pushing the people to the front I said Lord this is how my crusades and my meetings will be too I saw with honor and with passion All I need is you. All I need is you. All I need is you. The second day he preached a very simple message. And he was about to take water and minister the baptism when god opened my eyes that was the first time i saw the manifestation of the holy spirit like a dove it was a dove that was bigger than this building bring around the crusade ground i thought everybody was seeing it i was watching he was about to minister the miraculous was about to happen i had seen miracles i had seen unbelievable situations by the spirit of god listen when you find what you need break your pride pay the price 
pursue sincerely allow fools and mediocres to make comments while you receive we know that god is taking your master today save johnny and elijah said i know you are a temperous man elijah keep insulting me while i position to receive do you have the stamina to endure let me tell you anointed vessels are difficult people some of them are arrogant some of them are insensitive do you have the stamina to look past those things and say i know what my heart searches for i can't be so selfish to allow my ego rob a generation of a dimension of god the spirit of elijah dot rest on elijah when that grace landed upon my life I remember many years ago the Lord gave me an instruction that he was going to lead me to God's servant to go and sow a seed Bishop David Oedeko and that morning God told me this was the day I will not tell you how much but many of you will be surprised I got up got the next available flight I went behind every story there is behind what is it? every glory there is a real story oh before you admire men find out their story nothing works by mistake there's nobody who wins the olympic by mistake i want you to cherish your pastor sincerely not every man of god will open up their scars to you to watch no the pain is too precious i remember long and short when so the seed when i came out the holy ghost asked me to put my hand on the ground there in canaan land and said from today you have entered the overflow anointing i'm a product of many anointings it takes knowledge knowledge with hunger and passion hunger and passion the sacrifice of your pastor bringing vessels of grace to minister to you should be a clear proof that he sincerely loves you. You know, members, sometimes I say this respectfully, we need to honor the sacrifice. We never know the adaptation and the sacrifice that the servants of God go through for the sake of the sheep. He says a good shepherd lays down inconveniences himself for his sheep. Can I talk on the last part and then we'll pray? Can you lend me five minutes? What I'm about to share with you will change your life forever. Please pray as I share with you a mystery. It says, behold, I show you a mystery. I apologize for taking your time, but it will be worth your sacrifice in this conference. Because what I'm about to show you is what many of you have been praying for. Lord, why is my life like this? You need real restoration. Behold, like he says, I show you a mystery. Isaiah 42 and verse 22. Siba kalu sadam brahas kadiba latu ziatalakasia. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in where? Prison houses. They are for a prey and none deliver it. They are for a spoil and there is no voice that say it restore in this kingdom you do not have the power to bring yourself out of prison you will have to depend on someone who is already out of that prison the bible says the king sent for joseph and brought him out of the dungeon the fourth key that brings restoration is the ministry of the prophetic the ministry of the prophetic now i know that respectfully speaking all across this land africa and the entire globe there has been quite some excesses errors imbalances and outright failure 
in the administration of the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic especially i know that there have been excesses and all of those things these things are not hidden we say it with the heart of respect and honor for the body of christ but it is true and so in a bid to manage these things there are people who are who continue to advocate the complete annihilation of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry as a way of managing the imbalances and the excesses no jesus said in matthew 26 i will build my church so he's the architect you go to him to find out how he builds the church and this is how he builds the church he said jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone that immediately you encounter jesus there are two ministries you must meet the apostolic and the prophetic to be built this is how jesus designed the church that even in heaven the foundations are made of the 12 names of the apostles are we together jesus the son of god is in heaven desiring to come to the earth and not even him in his power had the right to come into this territory without someone calling him so anna the prophetess had to spend years speaking and calling the word you just know that the word became flesh but do you know there were prophecies that made the word flesh number one when jesus was born they quickly took him to these people jesus jesus walked under a close heaven for 30 years even as the son of god no mention of his heavens open until he went to find the prophet who god was using before he came over that territory now let me show you a mystery why many people remain grounded john was not a baptist john was a prophet baptism was a strategy given to him to identify jesus so he will baptize and look up you say go he will baptize and look up you say go he will baptize and look up you say go baptize and look up you say go suddenly ah, by the prophetic he identifies a young 30 year old man and he says behold the lamb you are not a man men see a man but a prophet is seeing a lamb that takes away the sins of the world i am not worthy to untie the latchets of your shoe i'm sure if jesus if joshua selman were jesus you say that's nice for recognizing that i'm not a small man but john made a statement that is a prophetic instruction suffer it to be so this is an ordinance if i do not submit to what you represent my own heavens cannot open this is your bible john and god is watching in heaven john dips jesus in the water he comes out and your bible says and the heavens open. and the holy ghost descended and then the father spoke he said this is my beloved son question what was he before listen please this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and he gave f an instruction nobody could break hear ye him who has told your church that who has told your products that has somebody told your products abuja hear ye him i show you why many people are grounded even when apostle paul met jesus christ jesus still referred him back to the house of ananias and said wait there why do you need to see a man when you have met jesus and he said still wait there is a system i have built for your lifting let me show you a mystery you see the dimensions of god that are distributed to the earth for the edification of the saints happen through covenants let me explain to you what that means faith healing god hides his anointing primarily in men 
are we together now the way god works it out is that he calls he finds men in every dispensation and then through the sacrifice of alignment he enters a personal covenant with them not old testament not new testament a covenant with them that becomes the legitimate platform for administering that dimension of his grace within the lifespan of that dispensation now when god finds such people he now refers them on earth as the custodians of that dimension of him any other person who must enjoy that dimension of him experientially must do it in recognition and alignment to those systems they are not just men they have become through covenant spiritual systems that administer dimensions of god are we together provided they are alive god will never ignore their office in reaching you with that dimension let me give you an instance on earth today the spiritual system according to the wisdom of god that represents faith is kenneth copeland any man of god on earth that is operating faith that is tangible would have crossed that path to touch with that altar of alignment the man that represents the healing ministry today on earth it doesn't mean he's the greatest healer no this is not about greatness it's about the election of grace of an individual who has become the spiritual conduit of a dimension that individual today on earth is many him and that grace came upon him from oral robots now you need to this is the protocol of lifting that many people do not understand so when god says i'm calling you into a healing ministry i don't care how he starts dealing with you one day he is going to orchestrate i mean healing ministry at a global level one day he's going to create a meeting point where you and that spiritual system that administered that dimension you will collide it's true did you read in your bible that abraham met a strange man in an ancient city called salem called melchizedek is it in your bible that God established his priesthood after that order. Melchizedek looked at Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High. He called him possessor of heaven and earth. Elijah was not a prophet. Elijah was a spiritual system that foreruns revival. That's why the Bible says before the Lord comes, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will come. Elijah is the name given to a, a spiritual, apostolic, and prophetic system that realigns men back to the purposes of God. The name of that system is Elijah. It, a man only embodied it. That was why when Elijah died, the system continued in John. Just like Jezebel is not a woman. Jezebel is a system of rebellion that administers the system of Babylon by attaching herself to power and authority elijah dies jezebel dies elijah resurrects in john jezebel resurrects in herodias jezebel promised elijah to remove his head and then we see that when they dance on the king's birthday it's a what request will be granted listen to me let me teach you a mystery the men you see that walk this earth are young but what is upon them is ancient is the continuity of a relay you have to understand this i wish i were lying i would have just apologized and we share the grace but i'm showing you something that is a deep mystery challenges are not generic they are dependent on the grace and the altar that confronts it you can be going through something for decades but the day you find the prophet sent, not the prophet available, the prophet sent, there were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. The word that delivers is not the word you read, it is the word sent. We're about to pray. Silaka Subranda Ziatahas Kalabaria. They are taken for a prey and none say it.
Now listen to me. When you discern who your man of God is, for as long as you think he's a man of God, is a pastor, and we are members of this church, you will never receive anything. There must be a deep contemplation of discernment. Who is this man? Know we no man after the flesh. What are the mysteries that sit upon his head that are responsible for the possibilities in his life? It is based on that revelation that you stand to receive. You can kneel down and yet you are standing up. That, that is just a, an emotional show. I mean a deep-seated recognition. I have met people that I know I was sent to. And it's amazing how what they call challenges were trivialized. Happy are you when you find the anointing sent to you. Let me tell you this. Not every anointing available will lift you. Yes, sir. All that you have given me, John 17, I have kept. And none is lost except the son of perdition. All that you have given me. All that you have given me. Are we together? There are men of God that require... I'm not just talking of someone higher than you speaking to you. There is a place for that. I'm not just talking of someone who is an elder in the faith just prophesying to you. There is a place for that. I'm talking of encountering the grace, the spiritual covenant that is connected to your destiny. Ignorant people will fight what I'm saying to their peril. Listen. I don't boast to know everything in the kingdom. I remain a student gleaning from the wisdom of men and women helped by God. But on this revelation, I tell you it is an office. I know what I'm saying. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.